In this video, I'm going to use Unity and Bolt Visual Scripting to show how you can set up items to be consumable, but leave non-consumable items alone. Let's begin. Shall we play a game? This is actually part 10 of my complete inventory series, and in order to complete this tutorial, you need to have first completed the previous tutorials in order. If this is the first video that you're seeing in the series, simply click the card in the top right to return to the start. If you're the type of person who prefers a written tutorial to a video format, I've posted a link on my Patreon page that will give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to complete each of these steps, which is free for everyone to use. If you enjoyed these tutorials and would like to help support my channel, be sure to choose your level of support on my Patreon page while you're there. As I stated in the showcase video, if you want the system but don't really care about building it, as my way of saying thank you to my top supporters, I've made the project files downloadable, not only is my complete inventory system included to these supporters, but my complete 2D player controller as well, which by the way, includes a simple enemy AI. With that out of the way, let's get started with this build. For this section of the build, we only need to set up one new flow macro and adjust an another one, so this should be relatively easy. What we're going to do is go to our macros folder, go to the inventory item folder inside the macros folder, and create a new flow macro called consume item. And this is what this uh, macro actually looks like. I'll zoom in so you can get a better look. Um, so what we're going to do is on the input flow, we're going to check whether that item is consumable or not. And if you remember, when we set up our game objects, let's click this berry right here. We set up um, two variables that this is actually going to make reference to. Uh, the consumable variable, which we determined when we were creating these items, whether we wanted this item to be consumable or not. If it was supposed to be consumable, we checked the mark. Uh, check mark. If, if it wasn't consumable, then we just left it unchecked for false. But we are actually going to set this one as consumable, which means we need a consumable message. Whenever we consume this item, what do we want our message to say? We, we, this one says you feel energized and refreshed. Wow, you can literally make this say whatever you like. But on our consume item, what we do is we check to see if that consumable object variable is true. If it's true, then we want it to do something. If it's not true, meaning it's like a diamond or something we don't want to consume on a right click, we're not going to do anything with it. So assuming the item is consumable, we're going to come over here to the uh, trigger consume message. And let's just have a debug log set up here just for the uh, all intents and purposes of this tutorial video. I figured this would be easy. But you can literally make this do whatever you want it to do. Just set it as a custom event and send it somewhere else to do something else. Um, you know, that's really up to you. But for this tutorial, like I said, I have a debug log set up that just pulls the, the con message in on that game object, and it's going to send it into the console right down here. So um, when we uh, trigger the consume message, we check to see if there's only one item in the list. And um, the reason we're doing that is because if it is the, the last item, we want to clear the slot list turn off the image, turn off the text amount, uh, which should already be turned off if there's only one item, but I just went ahead and make sure that was taken care of. So we're gonna get the child object, just the amount object on that image. And um, we're going to make the is full variable on our slot, our item slot, set to false. Uh, so we're gonna get in that pairing object and we're setting the is full variable to false to make sure that if we wanted to pick something else up, it would go into that slot. Um, we're also um, going to do another function down here if it is not equal to one, meaning it's more than one. Um, we are going to uh, just remove that item from the slot list and send it to the update stack, which we actually had set up on our game item right here. So it just goes in and it updates the picture or the text amount. Um, and um, where we're going to need to set that consume item is actually in our add to stack because our add to stack already checks whether shift left shift is being pressed because if left shift is being pressed we want it to do something else um, it also checks to see if an item is in our hand if an item is in our hand well then it just goes through these variables that we set up or these functions that we set up earlier we don't want to consume an item if an object is in our hand. So if an object is not in our hand, we're going to come right down here to consume item. This, by the way, would be the exact same process we would set up if we wanted something equipable. So we would just uh, add a new uh, variable here and call it equipable. Uh, it would be a boolean. And let's say, for example, we set that to true. 
also, um, if we went through our uh, consume item um, right in here, if it wasn't consumable, uh, we could make it be like uh, equipable. So we just run uh, the very same kind of process here and then we would send that off to do something else. Uh, but uh, so that would be helpful for like armor or um, like a tool or a weapon or something like that. If you're playing Minecraft, that's basically how they do it. So um, now that we have all of these things set up, just want to do a quick test on this to make sure everything is working. Um, just a special note on this is that key is not set to consumable, but everything else should be. So I'm just going to start my game up real quick, and I'm going to add all these items to my inventory. I just have them stacked on top of each other. Um, so whenever I click the berry, there they go. And just like that. And you should see that when we right click our game objects now, you should see it, it goes down a number. And right down here in our cons console message, you see uh, you feel energized and refreshed. Wow. So uh, the potion that I just drank, it says you're healed. And the scroll of power, it says you're now so powerful, you scare your friends. Congratulations. So we are able to consume these items, but when I right click on the key, the key doesn't do anything because that key game object is not consumable. And of course I made one little mistake on the consume item. I forgot to add one unit in that we need to, at the end of the train here, after we consume the item, clear the list, and get rid of the image and the text, we set the is full variable on our parent game object to false, but we also need to set our capped variable on our parent unit to false so that when we consume the last item in a slot, when we add a new item from the world, it will actually go into that slot. If we don't turn the capped um, object variable off or set it to false, then it will not be able to pick that object up. So go ahead and add that and you should be good to go. All right, you should now have your inventory set up that you can consume these items at your leisure and uh, non-consumable items do not go anywhere. And this is awesome. You should be pretty well set up for your inventory system, but what if we'd like to have an item tooltip display whenever we uh, want to get information on those game objects? Well, that's what we're going to set up in the next tutorial. I hope this video was helpful for you and that you now have consumable items in your inventory. I'm looking forward to the next tutorial, but for now, just let me say thanks for joining me. My name is Megahertz, and I'm out.